So our biggest impact to society in life extension and health extension is to help people live healthier longer. So when we help people live healthier longer, they're more productive in society, we spend less money on health care, and there's less grief um, because the suffering from aging associated diseases and complex disorders actually has an impact on all of our mental health. When you think about lifespan and health span, the Industrial Revolution was built on the back of that. When people live longer, they create more amazing things and they're able to solve more amazing problems. And they actually take heart in those problems. So things like climate change and the environment and feeding more people becomes more important when people have a higher value for lifespan. And that comes with living healthier longer. So when we look at life extension and what has happened all over the world, so the best map that we have of that is countries that live a long time. And when people live longer, they tend to have less children. And actually that happens all over the world. And so when we look at population gain and life extension, there's actually a point where there's a flattening around 2050, <clears throat> where we're not actually population gaining anymore. We go into somewhat of a homeostasis. And this is actually good for the planet. Um, it's good for the world. Uh, population, you know, is something that other technologies are going to run parallel with life extension in order to help feed more people and clean the air. <clears throat> so all in all, my feelings on overpopulation, they're not strongly supported uh, by the literature. And so, um, I think that almost we have to think about this in reverse. Um, if we stopped a cure for aging, we condemn 40 million people a year to death, and not only just dying immediately, but sometimes brutal deaths through dementia, and cancer, and heart disease. So instead, let's picture a world completely different. Let's picture a world in which we all are guaranteed to live to some 300 years but then some disease strikes us and suddenly around the age of 65 or 70, we start to lose our memories and forget who our family members are. I mean, we would certainly treat that as an emergency as we treat infectious disease today. So I guess that, you know, my hopes are that all technology is growing with health and life extension and they would be there to support us as we have these major changes in society. So the, the perfect balance of, of health and artificial intelligence really comes when the two converge in order to make lives better for humans. I mean, what is the benefit of any technology if it doesn't make human and other animals' lives better. I mean, you're talking to a vegetarian. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that how we treat the entire world and all the species on it is reflective of where we're at in society and how developed of people we are. So the perfect convergence actually of these two technologies would probably be human integration of things that we consider external devices now. Um, I think that we're starting to see those trends, um, chips put in brains, um, probably these things that are now hardware will eventually become a software that's actually a tissue software, uh, which we might be integrating or upgrading not only our genes, but devices inside our bodies that we can't lose. Um, and I think that that will be the ultimate advancement in the technology when we stop separating um, hardware or what we might consider computer and machines and biology. So right now we'll go at a deficit where biology can't quite keep up eventually with um, machines and then we'll come back and we'll probably converge the two, um, therefore creating the ultimate human body.